In architectural visualization, the photorealistic and the stunning visuals is not an option, it's a must. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you the six steps you need to take to achieve the photorealistic and the amazing final result on your renderings. But those six steps only will work together, so don't skip ahead because this is like a staircase. One step will not work without the other. So the first step is to have the right tool to do the job. And I know that in architectural visualization, we have a lot of 3D softwares and 3D render engines that will claim that they are the fastest, the easiest, and they will give us the more realistic result in the less amount of time. We know this field is packaged with a lot of promise and a lot of really good tools to do the job. I know that, but most of those tools are aimed to architects, to people that are caring more about the project and the development of that project than to the visuals. And this is the reason why those softwares have amazing features, but they are not so flexible as the two options that I would like to recommend you right now. And those options are Blender and 3ds Max. As I am a Blender user, I really love Blender because not only it is free, but also is really flexible and allow me to get crazy with my ideas. And I know that 3ds Max can do the same, but well, I never really liked 3ds Max. So if you ask me, I will totally recommend you Blender in the first place. But but if Blender is not your cup of tea, well, you can just stick to 3ds Max. And remember, the other piece of softwares in the market, they are amazing, they are insanely good. The problem is that all the time as an architectural visualization professional, I find myself in a place where I need flexibility. I need a software that allow me to create something that no one never ever thought about. As soon as you have the right tool to do the job, now you need to gather reference. And reference is not something that you take a lot of random pictures and throw it up in a Canva and call it a day. Gathering reference is the process to feed yourself as a human being with as much aesthetically pleasing images as you can because you need to feed yourself with the beautiful, with the stunning, with things that will achieve your emotions, that will make you feel something. Because it's by this process that taking a bunch of reference images, write about those, think about those, feel about those, and then by feeding yourself with a hundred, a thousand images, and thinking about those, and feeling those, and this will be your most important driver in your career, because you need to feed your soul and then express your ideas by using the 3D software and by rendering. And you need to understand that this is why most of the 3D architectural visualization renderings we have in the market are just soulless, because people just take some reference images, copy which make those images good enough, paste those things with the 3D software in another rendering and call it a day. There is no emotion, there is no intention, there is no feeling, there is no drive. And I can guarantee you that if you put your soul, if you put your imagination and your drive on your images, you will be able to deliver something to the market, to the society, much bigger than those lame renderings a lot of people are doing. So the process to gather images is to feed your soul, to make you full of imagination, full of intention. And those feelings, this intention, will need to have a way to escape from you. And your rendering should be your way to express this beauty you just absorb inside of yourself. So gather reference, look at reference, feel reference, and then use the software to express yourself. Because the next step is to 3D modeling your scene. And to do that, you need to know something that is really counterintuitive here. To do 3D modeling in architectural visualization, you don't really need to be so good at 3D modeling. You just need to be above average at most. We could argue that not even that. You can be really bad at 3D modeling and sometimes get something really good. Because in the architectural visualization field, most of the time, the things we really 
really are modeling are the walls, the floor and the ceiling, sometimes the terrain. And well, in Blender, we have a lot of really good libraries that allow us to download those assets. Some are free, some are paid, and then we can just put those things inside of our scenes and make something beautiful without 3D modeling basically anything. This is not a really big deal, actually. This is not a problem. This is how architectural visualization works since the beginning, actually. Because in the end of the day, what really matters is the final result, is the vision you are delivering. And well, sometimes architectural visualization can really feel like playing the Sims. Sometimes, not all times. <laughs> We know that it's not all times. But sometimes it's about a good taste. It's about your choice to select a sofa, a coffee table, a good TV, a good fireplace, just like the real world, you know? So here in the description below, I'm giving you my favorite websites where you can download 3D models for free or paid. And you can take a look on those links in my newsletter in the link in the description below. By talking about assets or 3D models, we also need to talk about materials. And materials in our Textual visualization will basically follow the same rule as the 3D models because we don't really need to go so deep and make every single material by ourselves. We can use websites specialized in architectural visualization materials like Polygon, as well we can use Ambient CG, which is free, or even Quixel Bridge, which have a lot of really good photon scanned materials. But you need to remember that materials are not only about the visuals, materials are most about the feeling. Because because think about it, if I show you a piece of marble, you know that marble is a cold thing because if you touch marble, you know this will be colder than the environment around. And you also need to know that by placing wood on your scene, you will bring a different feeling. And I mean a real feeling, like you are experiencing the real world, a feeling of something warm and cozy. Because a bad material will throw the person off the imagination the feeling of the image, but a good material will make the person imagine this as a real thing. This is the magic in architectural visualization, making someone look at that and feel that is real. Open a window between someone, the society, and the possibilities. This is the magic of architectural visualization, you know? So materials are not only for visuals, the material needs to be good to allow people to feel that this is real and to immerse themselves in the experience. Well, now that you have the 3D assets and the materials, you need to turn on the lights because without lights, no one can see anything. And light in your scene needs to be something realistic. You need to know how to proper lighten your scene to make it real, to make it believable. So one of my favorite techniques to lighten my scenes is to put a uh, area light in front of the openings because this really pushes the light inside of the environment. And a lot of people say, what the hell? But this is just not realistic at all. How can you just put a light? This is fake. But well, let me tell you, architectural photographers do the same. They put fake lights in front of the windows to make it look gorgeous, to make it look natural. So, architectural photographers use fake lights to make things feel more natural. Yeah, welcome to this world where Instagram and everything is fake. <laughs> but in the end of the day, you need to do the same. You need to understand those techniques that will allow you to sometimes use fakery to make things more real. And obviously, those techniques will never ever remove the quality of something like a HGRI map, but sometimes you need to get clever, you know? And light is one of those things that you need to think a little bit outside the box, because lightning is also about mood. You can use light to bring a specific sensation, because if you use an orange light, things will feel warmer, but if you use a blue light, things will look colder. And the warmer tones will bring more cozy feelings, will be more inviting, but bluish tones will be more scary, more cold not so much inviting, you know? And know how to balance those feelings, how to use a proper blue hour, a proper golden hour, how to use the shadows and the light in your favor will really make you stand up in this huge crowd of soulless renderings that we have in these markets in our days. Okay, this is the last step. And before to go to the last step, I would like to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out the link in the description below where you can find 
find my list of assets and materials. This is on my newsletter and I would love you to share it with you, okay? But going to our last step, we have the 3D modeling, we have the texture, the lighting is good, and now you need to understand how two cameras work. Because sometimes a 3D artist will have a really good 3D scene, but the renderers will just look like someone with a simple phone just went to the place and took some random pictures, which is just bad. You need to know how cameras really work, how to properly use that in your favor. Because in the end of the day, the final part of the job is to behave like a real photographer. In the 3D scene, you are like a photographer with a power of a god who can change the lights at will. And this is really magic because architectural photographers, they need to do a bunch of clever stuff to get what they want. And sometimes they just get bad luck because they would try to take a picture from a facade and it starts to rain, you know, which sucks. And we don't have those problems. So you need to understand how cameras work and the basics is at least to know how the lenses work. Because if your camera lens has, I don't know, 22 millimeters, this will allow you to get a much wider shot with much more information. At 35 millimeters will be the middle ground, something more grounded, similar to the human eye. And the lens with 80 to 120 millimeters will bring us this real nice zoom lens with these bokeh effects and those blurry backgrounds with a really nice feeling, almost poetic stuff, you know? And by knowing these techniques, you can bring your vision to the life because the camera is your eye of the project. So you need to know how to manipulate the camera to deliver your final vision. But to really understand how cameras work, I would recommend you to click in this video to learn it. how to properly use photographer's techniques to get better handles. So click in this video to learn about that.